So, today I'm bringing you my startup process um, with the Epson F2100 DTG machine. I do know my white and so low. Um, I usually start with shaking the cartridges. Normally, you can hear ink moving around in here, but considering the fact mine are empty, you can't hear nothing. But pop them out. These are the two whites. These are the normal size of them. As you can see, uh, for the color, I still have the um, original cartridges in there, the 250 milliliters. My refills are down below if you can't see them. Um, the spare cartridges are down there. Um, but what I'm doing is actually doing the startup process going to bring you in closer so you can see the screen when it comes on i do have my power on clean off um because i was noticing a large amount of white ink being dumped with it it's been about um i want to say What's today? Today is Wednesday. I think Sunday or Saturday was the last day I printed. So um, I do use transparencies to run nozzle checks. Matter of fact, my last day printing was New Year's Day. Um, this was my nozzle check from then, so it kind of comes in handy for that as well. But as you can see, I had some dropouts in the white. That's one thing I did notice about the power on cleaning being off. But one thing I did notice too with the power on cleaning being on. Um, when it's on, it will, for every day, it seems that the printer is not in use. It will actually continuously run that power on cleaning for a long time. Like it seems like it adds like 8 to 10 minutes or something like that for every day that printer has been off. I would rather it not do that and be able to use it much sooner. Um, so what it's saying on the screen now is the power on cleaning is off, which we know. Um, I don't know if you can see that pretty clearly, but it's saying that the power on cleaning is off, perform a hand cleaning is, if required. So I know I'm gonna have to do that. Now it's gonna tell me to remove and shake the white inks which I've already done that as well. You see me do that before I start up. I like to do it before I turn it on. Um, I don't know, it's just a matter of preference. But that's what that's showing on the screen now. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay since I've already done that. As you can see, um, let's see if I can zoom in a bit on this. Well, now it's starting to circulate the ink. Um, so it's going to do that for a bit. I also noticed that that is about 10 minutes. And that kind of plays into about the time it's been on or off. Uh, my waste tank is down in the back. Um, I do need to get another waste tube. Because when I cut them, I actually feel like I messed up some stuff when I cut it. But there's my waste tank down there. I recently just had to empty that probably about two or three weeks ago. I do, did not dispose of the ink yet. But that's about the setup right there. And right now, like I said, it's circulating the inks. So I'll be back once it finished circulating the ink. Um, and show you the next step in my process, which for me would be a nozzle check first because I'm quite sure my white has dropped out after it being off for four days straight. Um, as well as showing you all what I do to recover my whites. I might end up having to change it after this, but we'll see because it's been low ink for about probably about a month and a half two months now but um 
I haven't had to actually change the white ink, which is surprising. It's, it's going pretty well. But when I was saying the, the original screen, the icons on there, I know my head cleaning kit is low at this point. My cleaning cartridge is low, which I have both of those on hand. When you load one, keep one in stock because you don't want to run the risk of actually not having it on hand because whatever process you in, in the, on this machine, you will be stuck in that process. Um, I've heard people say they wind back the, um, the, the cleaning capping station or whatnot. I guess that's what it is. I have not tried that either. I prefer not to, not while I'm under warranty. Um, but to each his own on preference as far as that is concerned. I did add that indoor thermometer. That's what that tall thing is. It's actually a lamp and thermometer. It's saying it's 76 degrees over here. Because I was kind of curious as to the temperature change with the heat press on, which I just turned it on. So I'm going to kind of monitor it because I noticed the fans do kick on when my heat press is on. So it gets kind of loud at times with the, um, with the process of the heat press going on. So I figured that's the fans keeping the heads cool at any rate and making sure that the machine doesn't overheat because you really don't want a whole lot of heat in the area. So, like I said, I'm going to let this finish. This is about at six minutes now, and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So, this was the indicators I was talking about on my screen. Um, Try to get in a bit closer to that and see if I can clear it up some. There we go. Um, This one here is the head cleaning set life. These are my whites. As you can see, they low. My colors are starting to get low. Um, my cleaning cartridge is getting there as well. Um, but here we go. I'm ready to run the first nozzle check. Um, that way I can get an idea of where my colors are sitting at so i'm going to go into the maintenance menu which is the first button up top and i'm going to select nozzle check which is the first option and hit okay i already got my paper on there and like i said i use regular transparency film this i i don't like wiping off the actual platen or putting anything on it um you could probably find these cheaper than i did but when but I buy these from um, Office Depot and just use these. Um, I usually get three or four, sometimes more, depending on where I lay the paper at, nozzle checks out of it um, before I pitch it. And I kind of keep it to, to compare on a daily since it's date and time stamped. It actually helps. This is how my nozzle check came out. This one right here as you can see there's no white but i have all my colors so the next step is actually going in and i am going to do um the head cleaning i'm going to do selected nozzles um and i'm only going to do my white so i'm going to select the white channels and I am going to do a medium on these since they're completely out and didn't print anything. So it's gonna start that process. Um, you kind of hear it clicking and going through. It says it's about a five minute clean time on that. In the meantime, while it's going through that, I am going to show you all a little bit I actually probably should be doing this in a different room, but I am going to pre-treat. I got shirts in today. I ordered the Gildan Soft Style, which I had a few of those uh, already. Um, I really like them, uh, but for some processes, I feel like they're a bit too heavy for that. 
type of material that material is really really fine to me and it does certain things does weigh down those i don't care what anybody say but the feeling of a, a weak feeling shirt like the design is pulling forward on the shirt is just not good um i ordered the, the tool text 202s and i ordered the next level um shirt so the gilding soft style is the g640 um the next level is the 3600s and the tool text is the 202s i've been um printing with the gildan 500s and the 800s and that is carded um cotton so what i was finding myself doing is having to roll the pre-treat um twice in order to get good white coverage with those so, the test is to see the difference. And um, to give you an idea of what I mean about good white coverage, this right here is the Gildan Heavy Cotton shirt. And as you can see up on the word money, there's dropouts, even though I know... I pre-treated up there and actually sprayed kind of heavy. Um, there's quite a bit of dropout in there. And the reds are not as strong as they could be. There's no black ink in this shirt. I actually used the shirt itself to create the negative space for the black. Um, I took it out the design completely. Just so I could make sure it didn't have like any pixels that were not within a certain tolerance level now this is the one where i pre-treated and rolled the pre-treat on so i actually went left it, well up and down first with the pre-treat and then went left and right across and then cured the shirt so you can see there's quite the difference. I'm going to move this back some of the ladies out. But they're the same shirts. They're the Gildan Heavy Cottons. Um, I printed them back to back. So there was not even downtime. I printed this one first, then this one. Once I figured out what I was going to do with it. But... To give you an idea, this is what I'm speaking of as far as the difference. As you can see, side by side, you can see there's a clear difference in the, the quality of that print all the way around. Um, just looking at it, even the body, the legs you can see it all in there the, and same file everything just that second roll with the roll roller actually did the trick on getting the stronger color out of it so i didn't do anything extra but what i'm gonna do now is actually print um this shirt again on one of the tool text um shirts and i'm still with the manual pre-treat and i have not bought a pre-treat machine um mainly because i would really like to get the manual pre-treat down at least to a good enough science to where if i fall into the situation of not having a, a pre-treat machine, machine or it goes down that I'm not completely done until the pre-treat machine is serviced so I kind of do things the difficult way to start for most people it'll be considered the difficult way and that's okay but I feel like for me that's a better learning process than always having something to automatically do things for me so now this is finished with the uh, um head cleaning on the white so i'm gonna move my transparency down 
and I'm gonna send it back in for a nozzle check. Um, like I said, I did the um, medium clean on the white, only the white channels. So let's see what we got here. I'm expecting it to be a little bit still kind of out of it, but that's fine, even if it is. And I didn't think about where my platen height was either, but it was on a three and normally I move it up. But as you can see, I recovered the white channels. Um, there's a few dropouts, but none side by side. So I should be good to go with this. Um, I don't know if you can see it better if I put my hand behind it. But there we go. So I'm going to save this because I'm going to use it the next time I go in. And as you can hear, this is what I was talking about with the fan. It gets kind of loud. In a few minutes, it'll drop out and go quiet. But... The next step that we're going to do is actually the shirt. So be right back. Okay, so I have my artwork set up for the print. Um, this is what it looks like on screen. I do have settings that I use in Garment Creator. My um, white print quality is on a level two. My color print quality is on a level four. Um, I do have a pause set up in between passes. Um, it's a 50 second pause. I kind of like for my white inks to settle a bit before the color goes over the top. Um, I do have my color density set up on 50 and my white density on 40. My reduced white area is on a two. I don't have any of these adjusted since most of this um, I try to take care of in Photoshop as opposed to doing it here in the software. Um, this is set on a 14 by 16 platen, so the medium platen. Um, I do have it at nine and a half inches wide um, and almost 11 and a half inches tall to scale. So um, I'm gonna send this to print. Um, Right now, I'm going to start the prep work on the pre-treat in the process. So, here we go.